weekly Christmas Geek podcast. Uh, I am RJ Velosky. With me, as always, are Jacob Gamble, TJ Rathburn. TJ, I know what you did this week. Jay, did you do anything half as cool? I don't know. Does what he ever? <laughs> what did you do that was so cool? Me? I watched yeah. Star Wars like three times. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, there there actually won't be anything anywhere near as cool. Um, I yeah yeah. We're going I, on it, we're going on Wednesday. Man of Biscuit excursion. Yep. M eighty nine cinema eight forty five p.m. Come down and say hi. Or not, uh, or do you know whatever if you're in town. Uh, well, but we're gonna be there. We're gonna watch it. It'll be Jay. It's the first time it'll be. You know, you realize time. that by the time this airs, it will be past that date when we have seen. No, that. I'll put it up early. Why not? <laughs> it's the so, holiday season. People giving Christmas presents early. It'll probably go up uh, Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna put up uh, no particular order and uh, Man Biscuits the same day this week on uh, Christmas Eve. So okay, because it's the Christmas stuff. Well, that would so. be Thursday. Oh, Christmas Eve Eve. Okay. All right. <laughs> So by the time you see this, if you watch this right away, you will have probably like an hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> get yourself in your car and drive to the M eighty nine cinemas and play us on your radio. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Christmas is happening this week. But we'll we'll talk about Star Wars. Star of Wars. We will. Yes. Uh, so TJ, you saw it three times. I did. Did you enjoy it? I did very much so. <laughs> uh, every time. <laughs> As, as much the third time as the first time. Yeah, uh, my my goal because I I saw it with people and I've seen it now solo, uh, Han Solo. Oh no! Uh, God, crickets. God, crickets. I hate myself. Uh, like I love puns. Crickets, man. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> uh, but I did go and see it by myself specifically so that I could. Uh, uh, spend some time looking at it a little more analytically and less, you know, in the like the big and exciting experience and like nudging people and be like, that was awesome. Uh, being able to just sit there and and take it in and look at it uh, from a more a more detached perspective. And it was just as good the third time as it was the first. I mean, obviously there are caveats there that being there. Because I saw it at seven o'clock on Thursday, as early as I as anybody could in the area, uh, and being surrounded by people who were just as affectionate towards the franchise as myself was a lot of fun. And then we had we had some interesting stuff happen where like there were technical difficulties at our theater, <laughs> uh, and uh, so at a certain point, just like the picture drops out during the previews, uh, and then I ended up getting yelled at by a friend of mine from across the theater. And we were bantering back and forth and entertaining the crowd. And it was a lot of fun for me, who loves to be the center of attention. <laughs> uh, uh, so it was a really great experience. The film is fantastic. I would rank it probably at this point second uh, amongst the Star Wars films, just after Empire. Uh, and it's it's so good. Like I'd like to talk about it uh, more, but it's difficult to do so without... Uh, without spoiling things and i know that you guys haven't seen it and i know that a bunch of people that are watching this now probably haven't seen it oh by the time uh this airs probably fewer people will have gone without at that point uh but it was very good uh it was an excellent uh telling of a star wars story it felt very much like the same universe in a way that the prequels did not uh mm -hmm everything meshes well together all the uh returning characters were excellent and the the new characters are all just as cool like i care as much about the new people as i do about like our returning favorites and like the heroes that uh at least i and you guys grew up with uh it's it's very very good uh, which I guess I've learned that some people have decided that even emotional reaction can be considered a spoiler. So my enjoyment of it, I guess, is a spoiler. The fact that it was, uh, you know what? Is, yeah, but we're at not going to. I don't care. It was I'll, great. I'll that. We're not going. We're not going to go down that. Key and Peel, though, if you're interested in that, did an excellent sketch on the absurdity of spoiler culture, where um, 
to spoil the sketch for you, the final joke was, let's all have some cheesecake. And guy's like, uh, yeah, I love cheesecake. I mean, you're going to, we all die someday anyway, right? And they're like, oh, man, really? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> How did you not know that was going to happen? Um, anyway. Yeah. But what uh, what I wanted to make mention of is something TJ brought up that the whole spoilers thing, in regards to the whole spoilers thing, the internet as a whole has been really, really good about Yeah, not- like overall, but I did get spoiled by the internet before I saw it the first time. Because, really? How's that? Yeah, because people are jerks and because I am subscribed to a subreddit that I should not have been. Uh, our 4chan is just as full of jerks as 4chan is. <laughs> Imagine that. Like they had, they had uh, on Reddit, you can have Flair that pops up next to your name. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wanted to make their Flair a spoiler from Star Wars and post something and it got upvoted enough so it showed up on like the front page, then everybody who saw that saw that spoiler. Uh, so oh, nice. I saw a spoiler that spoiled some of the big moments like most of the big moments for me uh which it was interesting because there was part of me going oh no is that true uh as i was watching and then even as things panned out and i'm like okay so this is kind of this is what i was spoiled on uh it was still executed well enough that i was i enjoyed it uh I think if it had been a more reputable source, I might have felt worse about the spoiler. But since it was something from 4chan, I'm like, this could just as easily be trolling that is not true right. in the least. Uh, well, yeah, and did, you also guess, you also only have yourself to blame for being subscribed to r slash 4chan. Yeah, 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 you really do. But those that don't have themselves to blame, the only one that I the, the only one that I heard about that uh, that. Even and even this wasn't really a spoiler. Was Google News picked up a tweet from Mark Hamill um, that made the front page uh, and given timeline and things like that. Um, ultimately, he's currently he's on the set of episode nine, and so uh, it's the, one of those things where like, oh, now we know that he lives. Ooh, yeah. They're not going to kill off the iconic character of the series. It's ruined now, yeah, guys. It's ruined. Yeah. yeah, it was just a mild thing, nothing, uh, nothing major, but you know, it's still, I, mean, I guess, to some extent, a spoiler. Spoiler yeah, alert: person. they'll never kill off the Doctor in Doctor Who either. Well, I mean, they've already done it like a dozen times, right. but. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Uh, it, you're, spo- so, you're sounding a little uh, faint, RJ. Yeah. Am I, I, well, I'm a little bit further uh, because when we record. It um it picks my mic up really loudly, so okay. I guess when I go back and see, I'll see if this is the best way to do go about that, uh, or if I just mess it up, we'll find <laughs> out. Let us know in the comments. No, I already know. I already know. <laughs> Let's get behind the scenes. <laughs> right there no, the um, but as far as uh, the spoilers thing goes, it's, uh, the the absurdity you mentioned is something that um that's in- interesting to me because sometimes spoilers can't come from uh, a you know, a strange source who just sounds so absurd that you don't think that uh, they would actually be spoilers. I actually, um, I actually spoiled uh, Deathly Hallows for uh, my ex-wife um, doing something like that. I saw something come up and it just sounded so absurd. I'm like, oh my god, listen There's to this. No way. Yeah, and I read it all off, and sure enough, every single thing happened in the book. I spoiled like. <laughs> five of the key plot points for her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the... It's abs- good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yes. So it's good. That has been spoiled for you. You will enjoy it. Unless you don't. Like... And honestly speaking, even amongst the people that I've heard... Because, uh, uh, shockingly, I do know people who don't like Star Wars. Because they're monsters. Uh, but even the people that don't like Star Wars, uh, that went and saw it anyway because people that they love wanted to see the movie or because they just wanted to see if maybe giving it another chance would work. Even the people that don't generally like Star Wars came out going, you know what, it's not my cup of tea in terms of a franchise, but it was still a good movie. Uh, And that's something that's really telling about a film is when even the people that don't have that ingrained love 
for those characters in this, these situations still come out going, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Like, that is a mark of a good movie. Sure. All right. So, Star Wars happened. It's still happening. It'll be happening for months yet and years Oh, to yeah. Come. And broke the uh, yeah. the world record for uh, an opening weekend, uh, even without being open in China yet, which I think will actually lay, lend uh, a hand in the future towards the possibility of getting the highest grossing movie of all time thing, because it's not really about the opening weekend to get that. It's longevity. It's making sure that people are still going in huge numbers week after week after week after week. And so dragging out the opening in uh, at least one other major movie-going country, because China is the second biggest movie-going country in the world, uh, that's going to, I think, make it much easier for them to have that sustained burn to get the biggest of all time. And I'd love to see that. I'd love to see yeah, Cameron get unseated <laughs> by somebody that isn't James Cameron. <laughs> Is that number two based on uh, sheer population, or is that based on percentage? I believe it's in terms of the amount of money. Yeah. That okay. they're the number two in terms of spending on going to see movies. Interesting. Because, uh, like, for example, with uh, uh, with Jurassic World, uh, their opening was 520-some million dollars opening weekend of which a little over a hundred million dollars was just China. Uh, and so hope like seeing the, the ratios, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see $150 million drop out of China for star Wars when it comes out on the ninth. So, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm sure it's, it's just going to set all the records. I mean, how could it not? They've certainly invested enough in that. Uh, and we, I think we talked about it last week how it would have been considered a failure if it didn't break records. Yeah. Um, so it hit 1.5 yeah. billion dollars. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Um, well, what? I mean, what were the final numbers for opening weekend? Uh, anybody... Five hundred and like forty-seven million dollars. Yeah. yeah. No joke. A lot of money. No joke. <laughs> but. I mean, I helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, TJ TJ was like half of that. Um yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I got that money. I don't know why. You I hocked up, you hocked all your graphic novels and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, saw myself on the street corner for Star Wars tickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. All right, so with all the with all the press and everything following Star Wars, we got some uh talk from people who were involved in Star Trek as well, uh dovetailing into our Star Wars Star Trek discussion last week. J.J. Uh, Abrams went on record basically apologizing for Into Darkness. Um, what would he have to apologize for? That movie was perfect. N yeah, except there was no coherent story. There was... Uh, oh, there was... No, this is, was these a, are his words. These are his words. I never... He, he, yeah, he, he disliked... He stuff. He dis yeah, he disliked the fact that the studio wanted to play Khan as a surprise. Um, because everybody knew it was con and it was, it was just, it, it felt cheap. And yeah, he, he claimed that he never really got a, uh, oh, speaking of cheap, we're still on the red solo cups. Yeah. So get those cups out there for poor TJ. Um, he also claimed he never got uh, a chance to develop any kind of coherent, uh, center story that he wanted to tell. So it just became this hodgepodge of, of bullshittery. Um, random set piece moments yeah. strung together. Yeah. Um, also, though, I, I wanted to give a shout out to that because good on you, JJ. If you can at least admit that much, then, you know, I have slightly less animosity towards you for ruining honestly, my beloved franchise. But honestly, also, uh, Simon Pegg went on record um, oh. saying, please don't judge the new Star Wars by its trailer. <laughs> <laughs> or Star Trek by its trailer. <laughs> Jeremy Lin also was opposed to um, uh, opposed to the, the way he actually didn't like the fact that they played him up as the director of Fast and the Furious. I'm like, well, so far so good. The director and the true fan involved in the franchise are both as displeased as the trailer as I was. So maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope that it's just a bad trailer and the movie could still be good. Oh. But yeah, no, a new hope is for the other thing. Yeah. Um, Man, but what after, were you going to say a minute ago, weekend. TJ? Because, uh, yeah, I wanted to get both of those in there, but I didn't mean to cut you off. It was 
after this weekend, J.J. Abrams could, like, literally gather everything that had ever been done by virtually every other franchise, Star Trek, everything that I've ever, like, loved or even mildly enjoyed, and burn it all to the damn ground, and I would still love him. <laughs> all right. I, so well, we, we talked about this a bit. Uh, that, that sounds a little bit like the honeymoon phase. But... Yeah, I mean, well, whatever. <laughs> so let's but I mean, the movie's so great, I can't understand that. Like, there's no way anything bad could ever happen to me <laughs> relating to Star Wars. Yeah. What are you saying, Jay? All your graphic novels, go ahead and uh, box them up. We'll send them to J.J. Abrams. and burn them will... to the ground. No, I mean, he yep. could gather all of it up. Everything in existence. I would never be able to see anything else other than Star Wars. And I'd be totally cool with it. Today. Like, <laughs> could, could, could he do a terrible Sandman film adaptation and you'd forgive him for it? <laughs> I cut right to the quick. <laughs> Today, yes. <laughs> Today, yes. <laughs> Today, yes. All right. But I mean, after what he did with Star Wars and the, and the brilliance of his track movies as well, I can't see him doing a bad thing to the Sandman. <laughs> Can you imagine a Sandman trailer with like Beastie Boys? <laughs> I would see that movie eight hundred times. <laughs> Wow. All right. That's fair. Um, well, I guess a couple of other minor news things happened this week. We can't really go too far on Star Wars without getting spoilery. Yeah. So um, I did see something that's kind of cool. I'm going to try and get a pull a link uh, and put it in the uh, the show note thingies that we do. Um, because, the doobly-doo. I, yeah, the doobly doos. Uh, I like the... Um, I really like this. They they took the new Age of Apocalypse trailer, which released like sh- shortly before we started recording last week, and was completely overshadowed by Star Trek and Star Wars, obviously. But I um, this. it was yeah. still it was still pretty cool. It I was a it. really great trailer. I loved it. I'm excited for the movie. I'm but, super psyched now after getting back to it. Star Wars, because uh, yeah, one of the boys in Star Wars is playing is also, uh, Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, Jay, if you play something, it's probably going to come through the speakers, so yeah, just be aware. Look. I am just simply queuing this up for... Uh, oh, okay, you're getting it ready. Get done. Okay. Uh, well, what you also want to queue up is what I'm actually talking about. Somebody took the trailer and recut it with footage from the 90s cartoons, and it was just absolutely <laughs> great. <It was> just <laughs> absolutely great. Friggin'... Um, was, uh, oh, I'm blanking on her name, but uh, Sansa, <laughs> Sansa Stark as Jean Grey... Dream Gray's voice behind the cartoon Phoenix. It was just, it was brilliant. I loved her, it. Her, her accent is so weird. Bad. Yeah, it's Wait, so bad. The Stark. Yeah, she's Sansa, like Jean Grey. Sansa Stark voice? plays Jean Grey. Yeah. Yeah. Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. That's the girl. Yeah, that's her name. Yep. She she's playing Wait, we're Jean not Grey. Talking, she's too young for that. No, no, because the movie's set in like 1982. Yeah, we, we remember. Uh, Days of Future Past. They're resetting the timeline with with uh, the um, the uh, first class uh, uh, cast, and that's how they're moving forward with it. Yeah, like uh, it was like uh, what mid sixties for uh, for uh, first mid- class, and then yeah, seventies for yep. Days of Future Past, and it's going to be early eighties for uh, for Apocalypse. And yep. the general like idea is probably that what we're hearing for apocalypse like i'm we're not 100 percent, but i've seen uh speculation on the internet that the stuff about apocalypse is uh wolverine relearning his own history after all the events at the end of uh days of future past where he doesn't remember this current reality between like 73 or whatever right. until 2000 something Hmm. when he wakes up at the end and he goes to right. talk to professor x and he's like you know i'm teaching history but i, I kind of need some help here because i don't remember anything for the past however many years right. professor x is like oh my friend i have so much to tell you and so the suspicion is that this movie and then possibly other movies beyond it will be the, us hearing yeah. from professor x what has happened through the 80s and 90s and so on with that's, the x-men that's yeah. interesting that they put Jackman, who this is his final film, um, as such a 
centerpiece for that. Well, a centerpiece sounds more like a framing device, but we'll yeah. see how it. Framing yeah. device is how I would put yeah. it. Yeah, but um, yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm faith now that it's back in Brian Singer's hand. My faith, my faith in the X Men franchise is restored. You know, and we've mentioned before. Everybody knows they absolutely obliterated uh, X Three, which is what they needed to do, and kept it all in canon as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm really excited for excited for the X Men films, even though they can't be a part of the MCU. Uh, they're they're going in a good direction. So, um, and yeah, seeing the trailer cut with with the uh, the '90s cartoon is amusing. And you know, the '90s cartoon in general. I just have to say, I was visiting my family, um, my my uh, brother with my nieces and nephews a couple of weeks ago, and we decided to watch the Phoenix Saga. And that holds up. So that it it really holds up. I mean, it was it was an enjoyable, not just because I was hearing "I'm the Chuckanaw bitch" over top of the entire thing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it was it, the uh, '90s cartoon really holds up. It needs more Netflix play. It's on Netflix. There's no reason not to, people. Um, really, I didn't even know it was on. I didn't know it was on Netflix either. Well, then I'm doing you guys a public service. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Let's wrap uh, this up. <laughs> I, I will say that uh, Pete, way back when, uh, when the '90s cartoon first aired, um, Pizza Hut did this personal oh, yeah. pizza the and a movie. The thing. tape, tapes. Yep. 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 I watched black minimalist covers. Yes. Yep. I watched like the red etched in minimalism. Yes. I watched Night of the Sentinels Part One and Two probably thirty thousand times on that VHS. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. I so. wore out. Uh, I wore out like three of those tapes. Man. Yeah, I, out of the way, it. Gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome, and it was the way. Like I made my grandma. I begged my grandmother to take us to Pizza <laughs> yeah. Hut. Just were so there I, more tapes than just that? No, just volume one and volume two. It was just yep. Night of the Sentinels. Yep. Good yep. that I had them both. I, uh, yeah, good. Your kind of, your collection I, was complete. <laughs> yeah, like even retrospective, I am like uh, I can't have had an incomplete. Uh, I, didn't have it all. <laughs> I gotta go buy it now. <laughs> all right. Well, you go buy it now. I think we're gonna get out of here. It's a short episode this week. Enjoy your holidays. It's Christmas. Um, it's Christmas time. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, and Kwanzaa and all the other things. And, and... and all the other things. Um, you know, it's a great time of year to be alive because of all the cheer. So just focus on that and your quiet, introspective moments. That we're not privy to. That's right. But you'll be privy to us because we're going to be in your head there now. All right. We're going to get out of here. For Jacob Gamble. For TJ Rathburn. We are the creepy bastards that will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.